In today's episode, we are going to talk about three things that you should think about when you're introducing your settings. Ready? Let's do this. Hi, welcome to another episode of the Other Epic Story vlog. This is the show where I talk about writing and editing tips and tricks and apply it to my own work, which is an epic dystopian fantasy. If you want to learn more about this project, I supply some links up there. They'll help explain more of what I'm doing. Very good stuff. You should definitely click into it. Now, let's talk about introducing a setting in your story. Here are three things that you should think about when you're writing your settings. Thing number one, physicality. This is the geography of a place. This is the landscape. This is the floor plan if you're talking about an interior setting. It's good to map all this stuff in your head so you know where certain things are located. If you're writing about a town that's close to a mountain, which I am, it's good to know how far away from the mountain the town is. If we're talking about an interior setting, it's good to know how big a certain place is or how small uh, where the kitchen is located is it close to their dining area so if they have to carry food out these little details help you build out your characters and help you block out how your characters move obviously all this detail does not need to be in your story when you're just introducing your setting but in your brain you should have it mapped out all right thing number two that you need to know about settings as you're introducing it. Appearance. So physicality is sort of the macro look of your setting. Appearance is the micro. So now you're looking at the city. Is it modern or is it old? You're looking at the roads of this town. Is it freshly paved or is it completely destroyed? You're looking now at someone's living room. Is everything beautifully furnished or have they just moved in and completely empty? These little elements really help bring some life into a setting. The appearance of a setting also gives a lot of detail about culture and history. Has there been a war that occurred here or is there statues built of like uh, past historical figures. These little details give information to your readers without overwhelming them with backstory. It's subtle, it's digestible, and after they finish reading it, maybe they'll read it again and they'll be like, oh, I never, I caught that stuff. The stuff about the war, it was so obvious in explaining how, why the city looks like this now. The beauty of being a writer is to be able to recognize uh, opportunity to hide facts and uh, information in different areas of the story. The third thing you should be aware of when introducing a setting is how your characters are interacting with that environment. Uh, when you're writing a story, the setting is nothing without characters uh, interacting with it. Drop a character into a setting and you suddenly understand like Oh, how does this character feel about being here? Do they, are they mesmerized by the beauty of the environment, the landscape and all that stuff? Or do they want to leave? This place kind of sucks. Is this place reminding them of the past or have they worked really hard to get to this place and now they're just relishing in it? The way you introduce a setting can also be a good way of giving backstory about a character as well. The setting itself becomes something for the character to interact with, like dropping a character in prison. You learn a lot about them right away. Are they like a coward or are they re ready to sort of fight for their dominance? So those are the three things you should just keep in your mind when you are introducing your settings to your readers. So I have this passage in chapter two where I'm essentially describing a wasteland. Uh, there's a lot of different landscape within this wasteland, but no one really lives in this area. We'll have a listen to it and um, see if I applied any of the three uh, elements that I talked about today. The continent sighs amazed Delane. 
If his crime offered any consolation, it was the opportunity to experience the ever-changing horizon. Regular folks won't get to see all that he saw. Then again, regular folks were not runaways. Still, was bathing in the lake of Bordenon worth losing his home? Was watching the sunrise on the Miranda Plateau worth the loneliness? Was hiking through the Jin Mountains worth all the tears and sweat? There was no fair way to compare the reward to the loss. To do so would be to compare the riches of gold to the grain of rice upon the floor. What was once an insignificant morsel of food was now a waste, not worthy to be consumed, more harmful than nutritious. That was how Delane felt about the beautiful world around him. He was no longer worthy to enjoy it. Whew. So that's the passage. The thing is what I did here is I named three different areas without really describing it. I mentioned the lake, I mentioned the plateau, and I talk about the mountains. But never once in this passage do I talk about the significance of it. I'm just giving directions essentially. And when you're writing, you shouldn't really feel like you're giving directions. You're not saying like, hey, go down Main Street, hang out right on Broadway. It shouldn't be like that. So what I think I have to do here is better understand the physicality, the geography of this wasteland, how far he has to travel. I need to give a little bit about the appearance of these locations. If we say lake, you sort of have a picture of a lake in your mind. Talk about mountain, we all know what mountains look like. I think I do need to put Aaron Delane in that moment, have something significant happen. I think one of two things need to happen. It's rather I just skip this part just skip it like maybe have him remember it in some other way or i can uh talk about something more significant that happened there maybe it was standing on the plateau that he realized how angry he is about what he has done how he wished his wife was there with him <sighs> Maybe he flashed back and remember a romantic moment with his wife. I think this will do a better job explaining who this character is. Maybe he's never taken his wife to a nice location at all and he feels super guilty about it. And maybe if he just, instead of putting all that effort into being vengeful and committing that crime, he did something nice for his wife. Just an idea, just an idea. See, understanding your setting can open the door to so many opportunities. That is, I like that about setting. Another thing to help you write better setting is just to travel more, go to different places, and sort of see how you feel in just a different environment. That, that's a good tip, right? Anyways, once again, if you want to keep watching, I'll attach some links to more videos up here. If not, go. Work on some writing, believe in yourself, keep doing whatever it is you're doing, and I will talk to you in the next episode. Bye.